Hello we're the History Hikers, I'm Dries and I'm Jente and we're at Oud Koningsburg. Yes, Oud Koningsburg, a castle and not Hogwarts. This is a 20th century restoration of a 12th century castle. Let's go and check it out. Welcome to our final video from our trip to Alsace, which was almost a year ago now. We are leaving with a bang because Oud Koningsburg is one of the most impressively restored castles you will ever see. But before we can talk about its restoration, we need to start at the foundation. A first castle named Castrum Estufin was built by the Hohenstaufens somewhere in the 11th century. The high rocky promontory was ideal for observing the Alsace plain below. The name changed to Königsburg, meaning royal castle, around 1157. Many Romanesque elements dating to this period can still be seen in the castle today. Through the ages, the castle ended up in control of the Habsburgs, the Holy Roman Emperors. On the western fringes of the empire, imperial control doesn't seem to have been very strong, as brigand knights took control of the castle during the 15th century. A coalition of several towns in the valley banded together to capture and destroy the castle and to oust these brigands. The Habsburgs didn't feel like maintaining a large ruined castle, so they entrusted it to the Tiastein family, who would rebuild and enlarge the fortress. They also installed a defensive system to withstand new and powerful gunpowder artillery. Around the year 1500, Oud Koningsburg was in its golden age. The entrance into the heart of the castle feels almost claustrophobic. A narrow corridor with stairs flanked by walls with many arrow loops is safeguarded by an additional gate with a drawbridge. Seeing these terrifyingly strong defenses in this beautiful restored fortress left us in awe. All the fortification works undertaken during the 15th century were not enough to keep the Swedish forces at bay during the Thirty Years' War. Oud Konigsburg's defenses were overrun and the castle was pillaged and burned to the ground in 1633. The ruin was left abandoned for 200 years. In 1865, the town of Selestad purchased the remains. Following the annexation of the Alsace region to Germany after the Franco-Prussian War, the town offered the majestic ruins to Kaiser Wilhelm II. The Kaiser was anxious to underline the fact that Alsace was German territory once more in his new German Empire. So to legitimize the annexation and his reign, Wilhelm decided to undertake a complete restoration of the castle. In the inner courtyard, timber galleries have been reconstructed on the preserved stone consoles. The kitchen next door was also preserved during restoration with its sink and fireplaces. The beautifully decorated polygonal staircase leads to the private rooms and the keep, which is sadly not accessible for visitors.
There are markings on many of the restored stones which show during which year of the restoration they were cut and placed, like this eagle. Can you spot all eight? The restoration project started in 1900 and was entrusted to the architect Bodo Ebhardt. He worked according to a strict set of principles. To begin, he did a thorough analysis of the remaining ruins and walls to get a good picture of what the castle looked like. He then compared his findings with old documents and records. Finally, he examined other European castles and drew comparisons between them and Oud Koningsburg. This way, he was sure that the restoration would be as historically accurate as possible. The historical accuracy in this restoration is in quite a stark contrast to another restored castle we have visited before, Pierrefonds. The architect there used his imagination in equal measure to actual research. The result is quite a different, yet still amazing, palatial castle which you can see for yourself in the link in the top right or in the description. The rooms have been decorated to resemble the 15th or 16th century and retain many historical elements. This yellow ceramic stove is made of tiles which were copied from tiles found during excavations. Considering the castle was almost built up again from the ground up, it may be surprising they were able to finish in only 8 years. That is due to the modern technology which is being used at the site. There was for example a petrol driven pumping station for water, or a steam locomotive that was used to haul stones from the quarry. Maybe the most significant technology was electricity. Two cranes were installed in the ruin and were electrically powered. This technique also allowed the site to benefit from electrical lighting, which wouldn't reach the villages in the valley below until after the First World War. A heavily guarded drawbridge separates the main castle from the garden which emanates a peaceful serenity amidst all the fortifications.
A grand artillery bastion was constructed in the 15th century to add additional protection to the weaker western side of the castle. Several cannons and firearms have found a new home here. From the towers you have amazing views over the Alsace Valley as well as the castle itself. The craftsmanship that went into restoring the castle is incredible. Even the roof tiles are decorated. From these mighty towers it's also possible to see a couple of castles we have visited earlier, Rammstein and Ottenburg. After eight years of hard work the restoration was complete. The result is a magnificent museum of the Middle Ages and the revival of Ott Königsburg as it was during its golden age around the year 1500. But it was also a political statement a way to legitimize German control over Alsace. The many references to the German Empire and the Kaiser are a testament to this. The Kaiser's dream wouldn't last long. Ten years after the completion, Haute Königsburg reverted to France with the Treaty of Versailles along with the rest of Alsace. The castle survived the two world wars unscathed and now, over 100 years after its restoration, the Chateau du Haute Königsburg stands proudly at the heart of a more harmonious Europe. Wow, time for the arbitrary subjective castle score. I'm gonna say it then. And that's unanimous. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your score in the comments. And like, comment, subscribe, and all the good YouTube stuff if you want to see more of these kind of castles. Bye. Bye.